Oliver, not a good day yesterday. Um, I have not learned how to trade NVIDIA. NVIDIA is a, is, a, is a stock, guys, which I've owned from $9.50, by the way. Um, it reached as high as $600. But um, NVIDIA, when it is going up and down, and NVIDIA, by the way, is a very popular trading stocks, stock amongst a group of my traders because it is a high beta stock. Its volatility is, is, is nice. Um, you can get big movements. And if you know what you're doing, volatility is a friend. And when you don't know what you're doing, volatility is an enemy. All right. So we love volatility. And NVIDIA definitely offers volatility. Um, so I've not learned how to trade NVIDIA when it is going up and down a couple of points. I always lose on that. Anyway, I just wanted to share and um, kind of getting. I just wanted to share that. I'm kind of getting my confidence back, but it's not working today. I'm down $40. <laughs> All right, $40. All right. All right, relax. It's only $40. But I will tell you this. The solution to a lot of traders' problem is actually inside of the question that they ask related to the, the problem. So what Jenny is saying is that Oliver, I just haven't learned how to trade in video. I keep losing. So what do you think Jenny should do? Stop it. Stop trading in video. The answer's in your the answer's in your question. I listen, I keep hurting my head every time I bang my head against the wall, Oliver. I don't know what to do. What should I do? Stop it. It's just as simple as that. Listen. Every stock is not yours. The same way I told you my father used to say to me at dinner. And I used to get sick of him saying this. Oliver, stop. Every dollar in the world is not yours. Stop chasing every opportunity you see to try to chase a dollar. You'll never get anywhere. You have to determine which dollars in the world are yours, Oliver. You have to determine where you put your effort. There's dollars everywhere. There's a sea of it out there, Oliver, but you have to carve out which ones are yours and laser focus on that. And so if you've got a list of 10 stocks and you're keeping the proper records, you need to constantly determine which stock out of the 10 rewards me the most consistently which stock rewards me the biggest? Maybe not the most consistently, but I get the biggest gains from this one. Which stock is break even, more or less? Which stock gives me the most trouble? Which stock do I seem to hemorrhage money with? Well, here's something to think about. First of all, if you don't keep records like that, if you don't know where you're good at, what you're not good at. How do you know what to tweak and change going forward? That's impossible. So record keeping this way, journaling this way, is extraordinarily important. This is the key to your growth, the key to your constantly making the tweaks and changes that lead to growth and achieving higher and higher levels of proficiency in your trading, right? So what also is interesting that I think is important to understand is that making progress is not always correcting something that's wrong. A big part of progress is just eliminating what is wrong or what is not working and accentuating what is. So in this scenario I just explained to you, let's say you've got 10 stocks. You've got this one stock that you just hemorrhage money in. For Jenny, it's NVIDIA. I can't trade this whether it goes up or down. I lose all the time. All right, she's hemorrhaging money with NVIDIA. It's easier to eliminate NVIDIA than it is to try to make NVIDIA work. It's easier to remove NVIDIA out of your life than it is to basically work through and try to become good at NVIDIA, which might take eight months to a year of losing. Sometimes it's better to remove than improve. 
This is a very important point. It is easier to accentuate what you're doing good at than it is to improve what you're doing bad at. The first option is to remove it. Now, if you can't remove something, that's when you'll have to put in work to improve it. Like, for instance, I can't remove my second child, but I have the hardest time with my second child. I don't. I'm giving you an example here, right? I got the hardest. Uh, out of my four kids, I got the hardest time with the second one. I can't remove the second one. Maybe I wish I could, but I can't. So now I've got to work on improving things with my second child. That's an example of I can't remove it. I got to work on improving it. But NVIDIA, there's a sea of stocks out there to change. You, you don't have to force yourself to make NVIDIA work. Remove that. Now you remove your headache. You remove the hemorrhaging of money. Now, where do you put the effort that you were putting into NVIDIA? That effort is now free to place where you put that effort into what is working. So you accentuate what's working. You remove what's not working. And when you can't remove it, then you hunker down and create a plan to improve what you can't, what's not working. And so this is what, Jenny, if you're listening, this is what you have to do. For now, not always, maybe one day you come back to NVIDIA, but it should be removed from your life right now. All right? No need to hold your progress back by making something work that's not working. 